Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave is here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Devlogged. This is the show where I take a look at in-progress, independent games through their development logs. This time around on Devlogged, we're going to be taking a look at and playing the demo of The Dungeoning. The Dungeoning is described by its developer as a roguelike platformer inspired by Dark Souls. Now, you can get into some trouble describing your game as a roguelike if it is not identical to Rogue. And indeed, Nick did get a couple of folks saying, uh, Well, uh, this uh, doesn't seem to be exactly like Rogue. Rogue was a turn-based game. Uh, this game is not turn-based, so therefore, uh, it is not like Rogue. Therefore, it cannot be a roguelike. Uh, yeah, uh, guys like that are the exact reason that a lot of people have started describing their games as rogue light games instead of rogue-like. This game has many of the elements of a roguelike. It has procedural generation, it has permadeath, it's balls hard. But yeah, it's not turn-based, it's not exactly like rogue. Terminology like that is a great thing because it can help us to evoke a certain thought or a certain feeling in a person but sometimes people take it a little too far. So is this game exactly like the game Rogue for which the roguelike genre is named? No, it's not. Is it fun? Yes, it is. Give it a break. Try it out. Here we go. So we're going to jump right into things here. We are a little man with a sword and a shield. And also I think we have, yes, a we have a nice little slingshot. So we're going to jump around. We're going to collect uh, items. We're going to adventure and uh, I don't know if we're saving a princess or we're stuck in an ever-changing castle. I don't know what the... There isn't a lot in terms of story at this point. But uh, we are a knight and we are a dungeoning. So let's go a dungeoning. You're going to notice uh, when I kill enemies there is a little uh, cascade of blue... little cascade of blue experience orbs that will pop out. These little annoying bushes there. Now, the bushes are annoying, but they're also great because they do give you a bunch of uh, useful items. So, I can't complain too much about the bushes. See those orbs there as they chase me? That's my experience. There is leveling up. There's the whole nine yards uh, that you might expect from a game that would describe itself as a rogue-like game. This little thing dripping water here is going to be nothing but trouble. Hmm. Is it worth it? Ow. That took a whole lot of life. Is it worth it? The answer is no. Okay, a lot of experience, though. So I will go ahead and warn you, you're probably hearing it already. Going to be a lot of keyboard noise in this. It's just, unfortunately, the nature of the setup that I have right now. And there's no music in the game. Usually a game's music is enough to hide the uh, keyboard noise that's generated by my setup here. But, uh, yeah, not this time around, because there's no music currently in this pre-alpha version of the game. So we are collecting... Co oh, no, a bat. Uh, I am almost always killed by bats when I encounter them. Hey, I masterfully handled that one. It's something about them coming from above, and they're very... The, the knockback on the bat seems less than on other characters for some reason. Uh, but they almost always completely annihilate me. And uh, I'm not ever really happy about that. A lot of items there. And a rat to deal with. You're going to notice as I swing, there's a little bar that goes down in the upper left-hand corner. Now it's currently filling back up. That is my stamina. You will learn to hate that bar. Because there will be times in very, very tight situations where the only thing you need is one more swing of your sword. But I'm sorry, you've used all your stamina. And you're going to die. So you can uh, buff your stamina. Actually, this is probably a good uh, good time to take a look. Here's our menu system. We've got our equipment, we've got our items, and we've got our status. We've also got our basic options full screen, and we've got our controls. This game is purported to work with an Xbox 360 controller. However, bug report, I guess, it does not work with mine. I've tried my controller in every single port on my machine. It is a known good controller, and just to test it, I actually played another game with it after it didn't work with the dungeoning. Uh, but yeah, so not currently working. I also tried the 0.4 version of the pre-alpha, and it didn't work with that uh, version either, despite being uh, purported to do so. 
So we've got a bunch of items here. We've got a bunch of statistics. You see you start with fives across the board. Uh, let's go ahead and start upgrading some stuff. We've got a decent amount of experience, so we can definitely do a few upgrades. Vitality is what is going to upgrade that uh, stamina. So I'm going to start by dropping two in there. Then I'm going to drop two in strength. And then, yeah, I'm going to drop another one in strength because I like being able to kill stuff. Potions. Now, I don't know if this game is just very early in its development, which it is, or if this is intended, but there's not a lot that's explained about anything in the game. A sweet mushroom, what does this do? I don't know. I hope it restores life if I eat it, uh, but I'm not going to eat it because I'm not really sure what it does. Uh, red potion, though, pretty good uh, pretty good indicator there from my experience with RPGs that a red potion is going to ref refill my life, and indeed, there you can see that it did refill it by a bit. Now you can see uh, I am slowly, slowly... Uh, pushing forward in the game here, not... I've uh, been that way? Yes, I've been that way. I'm trying not to go too fast, and uh, as you might expect with a game like this where there is permadeath, uh, going fast can indeed be your enemy. You'll notice on the left-hand side underneath my sword, there is a series of keys. I believe the golden key is a door key to get me out of the level, and the silver keys are chest keys. We'll know right here when we open this chest. There's nothing in that chest, and it also didn't take a key. Hmm, okay. I guess it wasn't a locked chest. Well, anyway, we've got some keys. I guess we could go into our inventory here. So we have two chest keys and a door key. Okay. We've got some rocks, we've got some arrows for our ranged weapons, as well as a lot of other stuff here. Now, I don't know if there are any items you can pick up that are actually hurtful to you. Uh, if the game is indeed uh, based around that sort of exploration, then uh, I think that would be a great thing. But at this point, I don't know one way or the other because a lot of these odd things that I've picked up, I've just never bothered to eat them to see what they do uh, because very often I don't want to risk my run just to find out what a uh, you know purple dingleberry does when I, when I eat it. All right, let's kill this bush. Oh, I've been spotted by that ghost. What's a pillberry? I don't know. I do like, uh, after you get that initial upgrade, I think once you get to about 8 on your strength, uh, enemies start to die in 2 hits instead of 3, and I really, really like that. So I usually come up to areas like this because there can be false walls, and those false walls can have some uh, pretty nifty secrets in them. Not this time, though. Uh, let's see, what else to talk about with this game? The visuals. I love the visual style, that mix of pixel art with this modern sort of lighting. I really, really like the soft lighting here. Uh, he had an earlier version that was much more blocky. I liked that as well. Uh, I can't say that I prefer one over the other for certain. I think uh, the lighting in general is uh, something that sets this game out from the crowd. We've seen other recent games... Uh, that have used pixel art plus great uh, modern lighting effects. So, you know, we're not innovating here necessarily, but uh, that isn't a prerequisite for me to consider your game great. Innovation is not uh, something that I must have in every single game that I play, or I probably wouldn't play a lot of the games that I do play. Iteration is often, uh, often as much or more fun than innovation, in my opinion. The... Uh, if the wall jump is a little bit iffy for me, I think if I was on a controller, I would probably feel it a little bit more. Uh, but as it is, I'm just a little bit, a little bit iffy on it. The, well, there's a special attack if you hold down and for and uh, press your attack, you'll lunge forward. Nice little attack does maybe two or three more damage. I wasn't uh, paying attention to the damage number. I'll be quite honest. Oh, wow, it did 24. That was good. I don't know if it potentially can crit or what. Uh, this is a door. This isn't the door we started at, right? So this should be the door to the second level. Let's go ahead and get down there. Uh, we got the same tile set here. That's okay. I've seen some different tile sets in the game as I've played through it. So I'm going to have to learn to use that double jump sooner or later. Seems like they're kind of forcing the... Oh, no, another bat. They do so much damage. Oh, so much damage. All right, let's eat a dingleberry here. I'm just going to eat them all. Hey, and they restored my health. I'm hoping that they do keep it kind of that simple, uh, that it is just you get stuff, and when you eat it, it restores your health or mana, and uh, you don't have to kind of map out exactly what's what. Whoa. That block wanted me dead. 
Oh, we got a little wall here. This is the first time I've encountered one of these. Oh, and it crumbled into rocks, which I can use in my slingshot. If only my slingshot were more powerful. <laughs> the slingshot, I don't think... Did I use the slingshot yet? I can't remember. Yeah, the slingshot is okay. You can see it's not... Not really powerful. <laughs> so far, the best thing I've used the slingshot for is uh, hitting these exploding barrels at a distance. So this barrel will explode if you attack it. Sometimes they block your path. And uh, you want to go ahead and hit it from a distance. And you can manage to do that with a slingshot after a little bit of practice. Getting a little too concentrated here. <laughs> and I'm not talking. So yeah, feast your eyes about. This is the dungeoning. It's going to continue on like this for up to five levels or ten minutes in this demo. I would definitely encourage you to take a look at it. I mean, what do you have to lose? Uh, precisely zero. I don't know, a little bit of time. Uh, you know, 100 megs on your on your uh, hard drive. I mean, you really... Oh, we got another... Uh, yeah, we got another door. Yeah, now I don't have a door key, so it's going to force me to have to explore a bit more of this level in order to actually find that door key. Oh, more powerful bushes. That one was a little bit, uh, a, little bit gr a little bit brown, so... Oh, heck of money flying out of there. All right. And more rocks, more potions... I haven't really gotten into the magic on this game. Not really sure how it works. Um, yeah, I just flat out haven't done the magic, so uh, I'm no help there. You can kind of build your class according to the developer. You know, kind of craft your class based on what statistics you buff. If you buff strength, then you're going to be pretty darn powerful with that sword. If you buff your uh, defense, you're going to be tanky. Buff your magic, well, you understand how that works. Let's break through this wall here. So uh, that is to say, there aren't explicit classes in the game. Uh, it is a dynamic system where you make your own class based on what you determine to be your best path of upgrade. Ooh, sweet mushrooms. All right, we have a couple keys here, so... Whoa. All right, did we get our door key? I saw a key in there. Scroll up. Waiting for the slow crawl of all of the loot that I got. All right, door key, yes. So that's going to get us out of the level. Before we do that, though, let's take one last look at our upgrades buff ourselves up a bit, and then we will call it a day here in terms of the dungeoning. Yeah. We'll defense one time, a couple of vitalities. We've got room for one more. Let's do another strength, because I do like being powerful. Definitely building a sort of a fighter, tanky class here. Don't mind that whatsoever. That is sort of a, a class that I do like to play, prefer to play. We'll go to the next level, see if we get a different tile set, and then we will call it quits, because, I mean, there isn't a whole lot more to show you about this game. It is a really, really uh, a game to watch. You know, it's not going to break any uh, molds. It's not going to create any new genres. Oh, wow, this is the first... Oh, my God. Okay, let's go this way. Uh, it's not going to create any new genres or, uh, you know, make any... Uh, False wall? No. It's not going to um, make anybody's uh, top ten list for most innovative game of the year or anything like that. But, man, it's just a solid game, top to bottom. And every single game that I play doesn't have to be an amazing bit of innovation, redefining a genre. Uh, sometimes it can just be solid and a whole heck of a lot of fun. And that's exactly what the dungeoning is. Uh, I really like the art style. Some people might... Ooh, bat... Some people might be put off again by that pixel art art style. Not me. Not me one bit. You can give me all that you've got. I will continue to take and love your pixel art style until probably the end of my days. Really liking this tile set. Sort of a steampunk library here or something. Oh, I'm poisoned or something. What happened? Where did that, where did that poison come from? Can I eat some sort of berry that will solve it? I don't know. Well, still poisoned. Am I... What's... Am I on fire? What's... I don't understand the status effect that is ailing me. I am... I'm surrounded by a torrent of little black dots. And I'm losing... Oh! Okay, that exploded. And I'm losing life at a rapid pace. Waterberry? I don't know... I'm going to die. Somehow fitting to end my uh, dungeoning experience this way. Uh, again, pre-alpha, so uh, if it's supposed to indicate this status effect to me, and it's not, I really can't blame the game. Wow. Okay. 
yeah, take a look at the Dungeoning, guys. I really encourage you to follow its development. You've got it uh, on the TIG Source forums, on NDDB, and on the developer's website. So check the description below for all of those links. I have had a blast playing the Dungeoning. I would encourage you to follow this game. I think it has a lot of potential, and I will definitely, definitely be keeping an eye on the Dungeoning. Thanks a lot for taking a look at the dungeoning with me. Now, next time on Devlogged, we are going to get into three games that do not have playable demos. That's going to be Halfway, Crawl, and Maze. As always, if you are a developer or you know of a game that should be featured on this show, head over to BigDavisCheap.com where you will find all of my communication methods. Please let me know about any games that you would like to see featured on this show. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Devlogged, and thank you so much for the support that everybody's been giving me. I appreciate the retweets and all of the mentions that the show's been getting. I really have high hopes for what the show is going to be, what it can become for the indie community, and I'm just crossing my fingers as hard as I possibly can that all of that comes to fruition. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy. Take it easy.